Hello and welcome back to the Darth Magog channel. I'm your host, the Dark Lord of the Apostates, Darth Magog. And I'm your first officer, Child Care, Clone Commander Fives. Welcome back. And today, we're going to be evaluating one of the most crucial aspects of a Jehovah's Witness child's life, their baptism. Oh no. Oh yes. We would be honored if you would join us. Okay, Commander, so I'll let everybody know I've not seen one of these videos here. We've got three videos here. I haven't seen the second one we're going to watch, but I've lived all three of them, so I'm not too worried about it. I can still offer my expertise as an ex Jehovah's Witness child and ministerial servant. Now, what will you be bringing to the table to our new viewers? Well, I work with the younglings. I've worked in ECE for just coming up on 13 years and have a master's in the same field. There we go. That's what everybody wants to hear. Well, and me experience. Well, the experience That's is pretty critical. vital, yes. Experience is critical, I agree. Right, so which one are we doing first? I suppose we'll begin with... Oh, let's start with the second newest one, the penultimate episode, Become an Unbaptized Publisher. This one looks like it's gonna be a Caleb episode. Hmm, okay. Alright, let's get started. Probably should read that scripture sometime. Mm-hmm. Hey, Dad. Here's my service report. Good. You can put it on the bench. Oh, paper service reports. Okay. How silly. And the dad's doing dadly things. Dad? So just like a record of a die? No, no. You have brought this up before. Okay, I guess we'll find that out. Together in the ministry, you do very well when speaking at the door. So then I can? <laughs> Not just yet. It's like getting a license to drive a car. You have to be approved. Is that true? Oh, not even remotely close. <laughs> I thought not. Oh. We can discuss how the elders are involved in approving you. For now, let's see if you might qualify. Might. First, do you obey Jehovah and your parents? Yeah. Next, do you believe the Bible is Jehovah's word? And can you explain the basic teachings? Yes. And are your friends Jehovah's friends? Yeah. Caleb, you are already Trick doing question. very well. question. He doesn't have any friends. One they weren't thing. exactly his age, were they? You want to be one of Jehovah's Witnesses and preach. Like, there was that I one did. kid he used to race. <laughs> yep, no right. cheater, boy. <laughs> I think you are too. But we'll have to see what the elders decide. I'm so proud of you. I son. don't think Caleb knows what no, he's asking. Could you hand me that wrench? Yeah. Thank you. Now, Commander, I'm sure you have questions about this, but I think it's important that we deliver Jehovah's Witness context before we get into your questions and what this does to a child, right? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, context, because I'm not clear on what Caleb is asking to do exactly that is not already doing going door to door. Okay. Well, uh, just for context, an unbaptized publisher is... Are you familiar with the Jedi? Of course. Oh yeah, I suppose you did fight with them in the Clone Wars. Indeed. So, do you remember that kid that Anakin Skywalker used to drag around? That Ahsoka girl? Yes, we're fans of her. She's a good mate. Yes, yes, of course. D definitely friends of the Empire. She's a good friend. <clears throat> anyway, so Ahsoka, as you know, was a Padawan learner. That meant she flew around with Anakin and occasionally Obi-Wan. She did Jedi things with them, so they do diplomacy and lightsaber things and whatnot. It's somewhat the same thing with an unbaptized publisher, so you're not one of Jehovah's Witnesses, but that's what allows you to go door-to-door -door in the ministry and sign up for the Theocratic Ministry School and preach and conduct Bible studies to a certain degree, that sort of thing. It's like your first step to becoming a Jehovah's Witness, to becoming, like, a Jedi Knight. Ah, okay. Which is very confusing in the continuity of the series because we see Caleb going door to door already. Albeit he's with his parents, but he's still doing the presentations and all that. And it gets more confusing because we see him giving very basic talks, keep in mind. The Bible readings, which would be considered a talk. In the theocratic mi- or I guess they don't call it the theocratic ministry school anymore. It's a different thing now, a Wednesday night meeting. So uh, we see him giving talks and doing ministry which is what would qualify you for, except for one thing, now your time counts. Your time counts? Yes, yes. 
Like you're timed. Yes, you are timed, actually. You remember that little piece of paper that Sophia brought up? Yep. And put on the bench, right. That's a time card. So that's your publisher time card. When you go out into the ministry, you record all the time you spend door knocking and speaking to people and writing letters. And that's all turned into the Kingdom Hall elders at the end of the month. And that's reported to the branch. That shows how many volunteer hours you've put in. Okay. And it counts towards the society. I'm not sure if you remember when I did that annual service report, when I reviewed the annual numbers. That's where they get those annual numbers from. Oh, that makes sense. So that's what that's what Sophia's done. She's being timed in that regard. So it's like a time clock on paper. Yes. Yes, it's a time clock. I've never really thought about it like that. But yes, it is a time clock because they're doing... Yeah. Except that, you know, these children are not getting paid for labor. Oh, uh, okay. So we've landed there. Child labor. <laughs> okay, yeah. Can I say that on the tubes? I think we can say that, I guess. Well, all right. So, dare I ask, now that you have a little Jehovah's Witness context, oh, and I looked up the scripture, just something about children preaching the word of God out of the mouths of babes. I'll put it up on the screen, but it's got almost nothing to do with the video. It's just saying that kids can participate in the stuff, but we already knew they did that. Yeah, but that's helpful context, because that's why I was a little bit quieter in this video. I wasn't quite sure what was happening. This is where it gets really cultural. That's the problem with some of these. They're super yeah, cultural. Yeah, well, that's fine. That's fine. The main takeaway for me is that there's an implied lack of consent here, because it's quite clear that Caleb doesn't understand quite what he's asking for. Not really. It's like, he's any little sibling that sees his big sibling having more responsibilities, so he wants to do it too. When I was three, four years old, I saw my older brothers having tactical assignments, and I'd do mine too, which was getting a tablet and just drawing. I didn't know how to write basic, just draw random symbols. That was my tactical assignment. I didn't know what it meant. If I did, I wouldn't have wanted it. <laughs> that's fair. Door knocking is always exciting until you're the one doing it and having to keep track of it. Yeah, he wants the approval of his family. He wants to take to take on more responsibilities to feel like a big boy. I think is where he's coming from. And and the dad just asks him really broad questions that of course he's gonna say yes to because he's been trying to say yes to those questions. Do you obey your parents and the word of God? Do you believe the Bible is the word of Jehovah? He, he knows how to answer. He's been trying. Funny thing. He knows how to answer those in the affirmative. He's not going to say no. Or fully understand what that means. I, I was going to mention that, yeah, he probably doesn't. You also do have to keep in mind that this religion was not designed with children in mind, I think. Of course not. But the short of it is, it's a very broad sort of thing because it's designed for adults to become unbaptized publishers. Because adults, they can convert into this religion as a, their little stepping stone too. I've seen it happen, not very often, but I remember one guy I got baptized with as a youngling. He was an adult, he ended up quitting smoking. His kids were just a couple years younger than me and his wife was coming too. She was struggling with quitting smoking, the whole thing. But he was the one who quit, so he was able to get baptized. But it's, those questions are more designed for adults, but if you're being raised in a Jehovah's Witness household, by default, all these questions are answered. Even though Dad says, let's see what the elders say, the elders will ask him the same questions. There's no difference. Yeah, no, I believe you. What, uh, what do you think the likelihood is he's gonna be accepted for baptism? 100%. He's giving talks, he goes in service, his sister is already an unbaptized publisher, his dad gives talks, so he's at least a brother in good standing, if not a ministerial servant. I'd be surprised if this character isn't a ministerial servant at least, he's probably an elder, but it's never really come up in continuity. He's minimum ministerial servant. Caleb? No, 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 the father. Oh, I was sighing. No, no, Caleb's not even close to ministerial servant. That's like a Jedi sentinel. So does that change your answer then? I was asking how likely that Caleb will be accepted. No, it's guaranteed he will be. It's based on your environment. Because he's being raised in that highly spiritual environment, he's reflecting those spiritual qualities. Like he goes to school and preaches, he preaches at doors, he does the basics, listens to his parents so he doesn't get a beating, that sort of thing. So, all of that stuff literally keeping him alive, where he doesn't have a choice in any of it because that's the culture of his home he's doing. So there's no reason they wouldn't accept him. 
So on top of what I said about the implied lack of consent, because he really doesn't understand what he's asking for, the dad doesn't make any attempt to ensure he has any understanding of what he's asking for. Oh, no. Like I said, he's asking those broad questions. Dad could have sat down with Caleb and laid out, here's what your new responsibilities will be. Here's what you're going to have to do. This thing might conflict with this other thing you enjoy or that you have to do. So, young son, what would you like to do? We all know that's not going to happen because this is a coercive religious environment. But if it was actually about the child and them being able to give an informed answer, then that's what you would do. That makes sense. Anything else bother you about this one, or should we jump over to the next step? What was supposed to be going on with those lollipops? Oh, that's an early episode. Something about stealing. He decides not to steal, which is kind of the barest minimum, but I think he's like five or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, um, I think that's it. What was that bit about all of his friends are Jehovah's Witnesses? Oh yeah, the friends. It's good association. So remember we talked about bad association? Yeah, I remember. That's what I was going to say. We've talked about that a lot. I don't think we need to get back into it heavily. Alright, I guess we can move on to Steps to Baptism. That already looks terrifyingly cheerful. About that. Wow, that looks like me. Kinda. I guess, depending on the art style. Christian. What is it, my dear? How do you get baptized? That's a good question. Are they setting Sophia up? They are. One. By showing her a picture so of a pool? By showing her a picture of her mom <laughs> getting baptized. Yes. You can be young, like your mother. That's supposed to be her mom. Okay, yes. got it. That That's even trouble? creepier. And want to follow Jesus' teachings closely. It looks like her, so, you know. By what you do. Like obeying your parents. Or cleaning the kingdom hall because you're a woman. Indeed. The Bible. That will help you obey Jehovah. Is that supposed She's rejecting the toy. Yeah. I assume and it's a picture of some toy. Faith with others. You don't remember Sparlock? Oh yeah, do you remember Sparlock? But like, as the bear, yeah, I guess. Dad's taste in ties. Or Grandpa's taste in ties. Make friends with others who love Jehovah. <laughs> right. A little loud. Most importantly, tell Jehovah in prayer that you want to serve him forever. That's why we get baptized in public. Creepy. It shows others that we've dedicated our lives to Jehovah. That's so cool. Would you like to get baptized one day? Mm -hmm. Why don't you learn a little more about the steps for baptism and share it with us at family worship? Okay. Oh, they've definitely trained that little girl. Oh, you see that self-congratulatory smile they just shared? The, we did good, dear? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, so I'm trying to figure out how to give you some context on this one in under three minutes. So again, we're going to relate this back to the Jedi. Baptism is your knighting ceremony. It's where you go from Padawan to Jedi Knight, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, right. So context on this one. There's a lot to it. So yes, a little bit of context. We see Sophia's mom going through the baptism steps as a young child first. That is in line with how things go with Jehovah's Witnesses. There is no hard age limit on baptism. Anywhere from 8 to 80, and they've had cases younger than 8. So that's where part of it comes comes in. Another interesting thing to note is that Sophia's mom was also raised a Jehovah's Witness, so Sophia is, bare minimum, third generation born and Jehovah's Witness. So her grandparents, her parents, probably some aunts and uncles, whatever. It's already a family tradition at this point. So that's a big thing. And you see Sophia, uh, I do find it interesting that Sophia, who we know from the last episode, this one came out after the one we just saw, Sophia's already an unbaptized publisher, which you do specifically as a step towards baptism, and the questions are almost identical. But she doesn't know what it takes to get baptized. I found that very bizarre. Traditionally, you're only doing the unbaptized publisher thing as a stepping stone. If you're an unbaptized publisher and you're in good standing, you're practically ready for baptism at that point. Mm -hmm. They take you at the next convention in about six months, culturally anyway. So that's what it comes down to. You get to be a Jehovah Knight, you don't have any specific age, and you know, your parents are supposed to be encouraging you there. 
But they don't baptize babies, though, which, in the most literal sense of the word, is true. Oh, I almost forgot about this one. Minor note here from a watchtower. I think the article is titled, Baptism, a Requirement for True Christians, and that article outlines that only true Christians will survive God's day of Armageddon. In short, unless you're baptized, you die. Which, which we Which know. we knew, but they don't explicitly say in this, so I thought I'd just add that for context. Yes, that's dark context. Indeed. That being said, steps of baptism. Is there anything that stands out as a red flag in your mind as a childcare expert and as a professional teacher? I had some things. Then you drop the, if you're not baptized, you're not gonna mic it tidbit. So now I'm rethinking how I'm gonna approach this. How certain are we that a parent really, truly believe that? That their daughter will not make it to paradise if she's not baptized? Since they're supposed to be the model Jehovah's Witness family, theoretically, 100%. Hmm, yeah, I mean, what I have to say is still functionally the same. It's just with a bit more compassion for the parents, if that's honestly their belief. It has to be. They have no choice. Uh, yeah, not to excuse them. Not to excuse them. Well, this is a very tunnel vision conversation that they're having with her, isn't it? They're not sitting down, having a little chat, like, Honey, what would you like to do one day? Not that we'd expect that, but we can wish. Instead, they're planting seeds of... And they don't even tell her it's a mother. They just show her the photo album, and eventually she gathers it's a mum. As a little girl, going into a pool to get baptized. Yeah, I noticed that too. That looks like me. It's not even... Oh, this is your mom when she was your age. Oh, wow, yeah, look at that, family resemblance. It's, that's me in the pool. Yes, that little nudge towards self-identification is very blatant and very strong, which can certainly be read as yet another manipulation tactic. Oh, I'm getting kind of good at this. I was thinking the same thing. I'm a child care expert now, too. Look at that. Well, it's not that, it's really not that complex when you're not exposed to thinking that way. You don't think that way. Very true. Um, and I'm trying to remember now. So they're basically like, oh yeah, mum did the whole pitch of you show you through your actions that you want to be baptized. I mean, yeah, not that complicated. They're telling her very specific things that she needs to meet in order to be considered for baptismal, which is another way of saying... Uh, showing very specific way of thinking she has to perform in order to survive the apocalypse. Baptism and Armageddon, they use different words. Yes, yes, uh, can we correct that in post, maybe? I mean, we could, but, you know, I want it to sound like you're more Catholic than you actually are. <laughs> yes, I know, uh, Commander Fives is not Catholic at all. None the least, but it sounds funny. No, you know, and speaking of Catholicism, I'm not coming out to bat for any religion at all, but what you said just now about how the witnesses don't baptize infants, they won't baptize babies. They won't baptize literal infants, just to make that clarification. But other religions will, and there's certainly a lot of criticism about other religions baptizing babies who are far, far too young to understand anything that is going on. But at the same time, there's perhaps an element of the baby is welcomed into the religion as they are. Whereas with the witnesses, you gotta work. You gotta play the gender roles, you've gotta do the things, you gotta wash the windows, you gotta do whatever, whatever else mum was doing. I can't remember what all she was doing now. Oh, she was. She was reading her book of Bible stories, like we do. Mm, just like we do. Maybe a little less sarcasm. Little less sarcasm, but you know. Uh, yes, she was doing that, she was going door to door, and all that stuff too. I also did want to mention, just a sidebar on that, I do, now I'm not actually Catholic, I do have another officer on the ship who I believe does gender studies, we're gonna have to have a conversation one of these days, but I recall that officer is Catholic, so I'll have them confirm in the comments, but I believe you get confirmation in Catholicism, so you get baptized just to cover you if you die as a baby or whatever, you get to go to heaven instead of purgatory, that's the way they work. But then, once you're of age, you get to do confirmation and decide if you're Catholic or not. So that's just kind of a thing. Didn't mean to interrupt. Please proceed. Not at all. That's a good point. Basically, what I was getting at myself. You have to perform, and I'm using the word perform very deliberately, very specific activities to a certain level of appropriateness that is then arbitrarily accepted as good enough and not good enough. 
and then you're golden, aka you won't be destroyed. Pretty much, even the difference between an unbaptized publisher and baptism questions are minute at best. It's a little difference. If you're qualified to be an unbaptized publisher, you're qualified to be baptized, if we're being honest. Because you're still doing the same things. You're still cleaning the hall, you're still part of the school. Oh, also, I have a quick question for you if you're done with your aspect. Go ahead. Did you notice, it might just be me, I noticed that, and I know why they do this, but did you notice that Caleb's explanation was a bit more technical and Sophia's was a bit more emotional? Yeah, now that you mention it, yeah, that's a pretty good point. Well, also, it unfolded completely differently. They were going after Sophia, and maybe it's because she's the older youngling, and she's closer to being of an age, but yeah, Caleb was allowed to come to his dad about it, whereas they kind of cornered Sophia about it. Yeah, well, Sophia has to be the example for Caleb. And she's the girl. Yeah, she's a girl, but she's also the example as the oldest sibling. She's the mini-mom. And also we saw her as the example of the unbaptized publisher for Caleb. That's intentional. So she has to get baptized so he can get baptized. Yeah, what do you think the relevance of the technical versus emotional, more emotional take between the kids? Logically, from a Jehovah's Witness perspective, because Caleb is a boy, he's going to have the more technical responsibilities. He's going to, in addition to the cleaning and whatnot, because he has to clean too, he's going to be giving talks from the stage, he's going to be sorting out books, he's going to be working on the audio, that sort of stuff there. Because they want to train him to be a ministerial servant, especially nowadays, they're so short. There was an elder's letter going around last year, I'll put it up on the screen if I can find it, where they were basically saying, hey, if a young man is spiritual enough, a young ministerial servant, he could qualify to be an elder. This guy in charge of the congregation that's going to do marriage counseling and all that sort of stuff at the age of 21. And you can qualify to be a ministerial servant, um, I think they said late teens or something like that, which is about right when I became a ministerial servant. I was gonna ask. Like, 17 or 18, it was somewhere in there. I got baptized at 16, so I was like 17, 18. But they say that would be acceptable, that would be appropriate if he's appropriately spiritual. Which means, if you're the only kid not causing trouble, you're pretty much good. So, because Caleb has a lot more to do for the organization, they need the, pardon the term, manpower. He gets the more technical explanation, because he's gonna do more. Sophia, she can pioneer, I guess, or be an elder's wife, or if she's lucky, a circuit overseer's wife. But, the using the emotional comfort of being part of one's heritage and following in the family footsteps to reel her in. Right, because she, as, as a girl, she's going to be focused on family. She's going to be the caretaker of the children. She's under the umbrella of the husband. So she's going to be the core of the family. You know, just culturally. Yeah, wanted to ask, especially since there's no age limit for being baptized, does that create any extra competition among children to get baptized first? Not really, but within of themselves, no. However, culturally, and this is more from the adults, they'll use a baptized child as an example. So, for example, young brother Enoch is doing so good. He's behind the counter over there. Young brother, uh, Luke, brother Luke, I want you to be just like brother Enoch when you get older. Look what he's doing there. I want you to associate with him. I want you to be on his level. That's what they say. So you're good association. You're who's encouraged. And I've heard anecdotal cases, and come to think of it, I've seen it personally, where less qualified young men who weren't pursuing spiritual things were not necessarily outright considered bad association, but they were. You wouldn't be encouraged to hang out with them outside. People wouldn't go, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure if he's reaching his spiritual goals. And it becomes an issue. It becomes a soft shunning experience. They don't have a term for it, but avoiding bad association falls into that. Okay, yeah, I think, uh, I think we broke open that video. <laughs> yes, well that being said, why don't we go into something slightly lighter and so- Actually, who am I kidding? I was gonna sigh. This'll be the one to finish it. We actually get to see Caleb and Sophia doing their unbaptized publisher, whatever they are. This episode is before the last two. Here we go, but this one's titled, Don't Give Up. I see. Hi, I'm Sophia. I have a great video about God's promise for the Earth. Oh, sweetheart, thank you. I'm not interested. 42. I bet that happens a lot. Oh, I've heard that 42 times. And you can read the Bible and watch videos. Really busy, kid. 57. That tattoo, it's not accidental. No, no. Or the beard, either. Yeah. Mm, poor kids. That's a whole day. Yeah.
Can we take a break? Yeah. A break already? Uh, yeah. How many hours has it been already? Doesn't matter when you're getting the door slammed in your face. A break might be nice, but before we go, do you remember when Jesus preached? Did everybody listen to him? Oh, it's your boy. I don't even know to say to him anymore. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's what I'm doing. Why didn't Jesus give up? Because Not gonna greet you, boy. To hear the good news. Gonna have that's to disown him eventually. He's the wrong so everything. How about we each try another house? I like how the pep talk brought him right back up. Here's the unrealistic pop. Must be like Slankies. And there's the nightmare. There's the nightmare. Oh, was that Cheeto Boy? That was Chuck the Cheeto Boy. Oh, it doesn't even tell us if it was successful or not? Oh no, absolutely not. Why Why would you want to know a follow-up? Well, that's the... Because it's not. That's the logical narrative arc. No. Is that if they hit the slump and they resilience themselves back, that's not a word, but it's a word now, resilienced, and it was successful. Yeah. And it was successful. No, that's not how it works at all. Well, that's how... No, you that's resilience how them works. back up. Well, that's how Disney works, but not Jehovah's Witnesses. Damn. Well, we wouldn't be here otherwise if that's how it worked. Anyway, let me give you some Jehovah's Witness context behind this one. So needless to say, Jehovah's Witnesses, they believe, there's a scripture that says, and they'll preach to all the inhabited earth before the world will end, and so on and so forth. Lots of scriptures about preaching. So obviously, preaching is essential to Jehovah's Witness life. That includes the children being raised by Jehovah's Witnesses, whether they're baptized or they're unbaptized publishers, or, you know, if their parents are just out, you just go with them. That's how that works. Uh, now, needless to say, and this isn't always highlighted in the first party material, Material, I'm actually kind of glad they were honest about it, and this is actually pretty soft compared to some of the stuff you'll get in the field ministry. You get a lot of closed doors, a lot of slam doors. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. No doubts. And they really did show how I like the bit with the lady standing there who says, Oh, sweetie, that'll be wonderful. I'm not interested, though. And they'll soften it a little bit because there's a child there. Then after that, nope, real busy kid. Sorry about that. They really don't, people really don't like being mean to children, and I think that's part of why you're supposed to bring the children and bring them to present to soften hearts, and people don't like being mean to children, especially children that don't necessarily want to be there, one way or another, so that's a factor, the constant rejection, you're going to be rejected over and over and over and over again especially if you're doing cold calling. What I thought was interesting was that they brought in Chuck the Cheeto Boy. I bet you Sophia probably got her door slammed in the face again, so there's no getting around it, and that's just what happens a lot of the time. You get the pep top, you read the scripture, you get hyped again, and then just door closing, and that's the JW experience. What I thought was interesting about having Chuck there, so it was kind of a warm approach, and I think that was meant to make it so Padawans aren't afraid to talk to people they know. It's a warmer approach, kind of like door-to-door -door sales. You start with people you know, but they're only being polite because they know you, and that's the whole thing. That's Jehovah's Witness context. They don't want you to give up despite the fact that you're preaching an unpopular message, and it's going to get more unpopular as time goes on because they're going to stop preaching saviorism and they're just going to start walking up to the door and saying, you're gonna die and there's nothing you can do about it, boy. I don't know why, but they say that's when the message is gonna change. I've got a clip of that I'll toss in here now. Okay. Kevin knows we're in the Great Tribulation. Why would he say he doesn't want anything to do with us anymore? Darren, I thought you had heard by now. I heard what? When our message changed, from good news to judgment, he was telling everyone that it would make problems for us, and that he was done. Huh. Well, the main thing that's sticking with me is the way the parents turn and almost whore when the younglings request a break. It's just this... <laughs> I know it's literally a cartoon, but it's so cartoony. Right, well, you know it's a real thing. Yeah, the parents, we know from the last video that at least the mom's been in the truth, as they say, for her whole life. So they've built up a resistance to it. They've built up an immunity. But these are fresh-faced kids. These are two kids under 12. They are not prepared for this. 
Well, and it's another way of, in this case, more subtly shaming the cadets for having very age-appropriate human needs. They could have even said, okay, let's sit for a minute, have a drink of water, then we'll get back out there. But it wasn't even that. Oh no, Jesus. White Jesus, in fact. Ha, <laughs> white Jesus. Jesus never got tired or whatever. No, the demigod never needed a break from being rejected because he subsided specifically on the cosmic force of the universe. And you guys can too, maybe. Yeah, and I think it was the grief video that we did where we talked a little more in depth about the ethics or lack thereof of taking Sophia door to door, so I won't rip all that open again. But yeah, the fact that they're being forced to do that, that it's the only way to get into the truth, not good for them. I mean, no youngling wants to be taken port to port trying to convince strangers to read the Bible. I mean... Oh, not convince them to read the Bible. They don't care if you read the Bible. They care if... Well, Caleb was being all sweet. If you read the Watchtower. You can read the Bible well, on it. Yeah, yeah, because that's the palatable message, Commander. Yes, well, so no one paid attention to the youngling's needs or the impact this is having on them. No, of course, no questions about whether they should be there at all. Instead of, oh, I don't know, something that's actually enriching and actually holds their interest and actually sparks joy. No, just constant, deflating. You know, this is one of the reasons why so many child actors suffer so much. Oh yeah? Because it's another environment that uh, has hyper-rejection biked into it, unavoidably. You think about sending a child on audition after audition after audition after audition, and even if they get the part, it's still all about, often it's all about can they do the job, but not what's good for the kid. I don't want to go off on too much of a rant. Google some famous child stars, and you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a hard thing unless they're lucky enough to have guardians who do very, very well and intentionally well by them. It's ironic. In Jehovah's Witnesses, very much it's the same thing. Not what you know, it's who you know. Specifically, they don't particularly care how much you know about the Bible. It's are you living this way? Are you associating with the right people? That, pretty much, is your qualification. Yeah, so basically, poor kids, to sum that's, it up. That's pretty much this entire video series, is poor kids. They look so sad when they get in the car, and there's no attention paid to that. It's just the, again, the, a break? We can't have that. And why can't they? Like I said a minute ago, why can't they take a five and have a little glass of water? Because and you also, can't. I'm go oh, go ahead, Mike. Because you can't count time for a glass of water. Child labor. Which the U.S. has loosened laws around, and this is a U.S.-based religion, so it's perfect. And that aspect of this religion is very much setting them up for the grind of the workforce under capitalism. Oh no, they're not worried about the workforce under capitalism. You're not encouraged to work full-time. No, I understand, but still very much like that. Oh, very much so. Watchtower is a corporation, but uh, they're setting up for the grind under capitalism without payment. Yes, which is what we call slavery, technically. Technically, child slavery. Just, just say slavery. Slavery it is, sir. Yeah, uh, I wanted to go back to the end before I forget and how it was all set up in Wyden. Not that I want anyone else to be caught in the net of this organization, but for Caleb's sake, I wanted him to have a win. And he doesn't get a win, because the Criffin video cuts out when he's looking at Cheeto Boy. He doesn't even like him. So not only are we not getting a pick-me-up, a nice little, however unrealistic it might be, a nice little tie-up with a bow ending, we don't get that. It's just, here, more grinding, and here's how you bolster up your resilience, kids. Just think about white Jesus. Specifically. And it may or may not even work. I mean, how awful. Just take the kids to the damn park. That's where they wanted to go that one episode where they had to go help Elder Tony. No, no, it was Wilfred that needed help, so they can't go to the park. Wilfred needed help. They don't get to go to the park. Wilfred always needs help. Take your cadets outside. Padawans outside. Have them touch grass. Have them touch grass while they preach the grass. Wait in the stream. Take them outside. Well, as always, I'd like to thank our first officer, Clone Commander Fives, for lending their childcare expertise to the channel. You are welcome. Thanks for having me. And to you, XJW agents, what do you think? Have you had experiences as a Jehovah's Witness child working on baptism or field service? Or do you have opinions about how this helps or harms children? Whatever your thoughts may be, we'd love to read them in the comment section down below. 
Also, don't forget to suggest any other Caleb and Sophia content that you'd like us to react to that we have not yet covered. You can check out the playlist in the upper right hand corner of the screen. But until next time, agents, remember, the elders may be watching you, but Darth, Darth Magog, Magog is watching the Watchtower. Watchtower. Thank you.